You can go into any single gym and buy steroids within five minutes of being in there. If you train properly, diet properly, take this shit, you're going to feel indestructible. Who doesn't want to feel like that? They're very powerful hormones, but with any drugs, there's always payback. But when there's a drug that does the job, it's a hard argument to say, well, don't use it. Every time you take this shit, you're risking your fucking life, you know? It's, it's a lottery. Ah, oh, fuck hell. An estimated half a million young men in the UK are addicted to steroids. In fact, the Class C drug is the second most used drug after cannabis. Mate, so when you train, I've never done the, it. The so pump is unreal. But steroids come with some pretty alarming side effects, including liver and kidney failure. We've got a lot of medication for the heart failure and the heart attacks. As well as mood swings and increased estrogen, which results in men needing breast reduction surgery. I want to take a look inside the steroid epidemic, from the dealers selling it to the young men taking it. Why is the generation of young men getting hooked on roids? I'm just outside Cardiff in the valleys right now and we're about to see Tom Powell. If it sounds familiar, it's because he was in season two of Love Island. He's been openly taking steroids for a number of years now. Do you still think there's like bad connotations with steroid use and that whole stigma of your balls will shrink? Uh, that's not stigma, that's fucking true. It's true. Yeah, my balls are tiny. <laughs> well, <laughs> my balls are pretty small. He uses his platform to teach young men how to take them safely. Tom, take me back. What was your physique like before steroids? Back in school, I was a chubby little kid. <laughs> uh, so, for years, for years, I was. Till I realised girls don't like fat guys. When did you start taking steroids? Five months after Love Island. Was being on camera, did that affect how you saw yourself? Yeah, I felt pressure to stay in shape more. Um, it wasn't the reason why I jumped on steroids. It, it was a contributing factor. Obviously, I wanted to look good all the time because you're constantly in the public eye. The main reason why I went on Love Island is because I wanted to become a sponsored athlete. I met the guys that I wanted to become, you know, and I asked them straight away, I was like, boys, talk to me about steroids, are you on them? And they said, yeah, you can't get anywhere in this industry without them. You can go into any single gym and buy steroids within five minutes of being in there. That's nuts, man. They're very, very available. So what's the biggest you've ever got? 120 kilos lean. Five, six years ago when I first started taking steroids, I wanted to be these you know, topless influencers that were shredded and I wanted to be that. And now I realised that that was the wrong way to go about it and that's not what the fitness industry should be. I take TRT now, which is called Testosterone Replacement Therapy. It's a very low level of testosterone. It's not for muscle gains, it's just for replenishment of me. I've actually got a job now, if you want to see it. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Long-term steroid use impairs your testosterone production resulting in symptoms like fatigue, anxiety, and low libido. Tom has to take TRT, a prescribed light steroid to help balance his hormones. Where would you inject it? Today is my bum, unfortunately for you. I'm here for the ride, let's go. There's a certain V in your ass where you're not supposed to go. So I'm gonna be going around here. Wipe the area first. I never thought I'd be staring intently into someone's bum cheeks today, but... <laughs> Tap off, push all the air bubbles out, and that's ready to go. There we have it. New alcohol wipe. Wipe all around the area. And that is all done. And that, that didn't hurt? At all. When you first started taking it, what were the side effects? This is where I was taking trend in my third cycle, so I had a lot. My mood swings were up and down, night terrors, which is uh, horrible dreams every single night. Couldn't keep a hard on. <laughs> Damn. I looked incredible. I looked lean, I was full, I, you know, it was great, but I felt like death. You did something mad recently, like you were having a surgery and then you, you live streamed it? Yeah, I had gyno surgery. Gyno's a build of oestrogen behind the nipple. I'm oestrogen sensitive. Uh, so when I was taking steroids, my oestrogen built up and Stuck behind my nipple basically and it was causing pain. Ugly pack, minion titty. Why did you live stream it, bro? To raise awareness, I know it's a bit crazy. The more people it sees, the more people it reaches, the more people are going to see it and, and maybe get it checked out. So I thought, yeah, why not go live? 
I'm trying to enlighten people about the use of steroids, bodybuilding, they get so shredded, they lose their sex drive. And we, as a community, epitomize these, these people with six packs. And actually, these guys are, are so not healthy. Women lose their periods for life sometimes, not just a couple of weeks, just by doing a couple of bodybuilding shows and people don't realize this. Let's say I'm a young person trying to get into the fitness industry and I want to be the next gym influencer. Would you advise me to take steroids? Uh, find your own path. I want to be in the industry so much, I listen to what anyone else did. Do your own journey. Thomas suffered numerous side effects from his years of steroid use, including having to do breast reduction surgery as a result of gynecomastia. The surgeon who performed Tom's operation, the self-proclaimed king of gyno, Dr. John, warns that tens of thousands of men are now at risk of needing the surgery due to steroid use. How many gynecomastia surgeries would you say you do in a week due to steroids? I do about two to three a day. Um, so if we say half of them are due to steroids, I mean, we're talking about you know, 15 in five days, so about seven or eight, probably from, from steroid use. Wow. But I'm the king of gyno, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. John is letting us film his next breast reduction surgery. His patient, Grant, is already in the waiting room. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, Oh, I'm all good, I'm all good. How are you feeling? Nervous. Why are you getting this done? Like, everyone I speak to, no one notices it on me. But for me, it's a self-confidence thing. I've always had, like, a little bit of it when I was younger. So as soon as I hit, like, 16, you get it when, like, some people hit it through puberty. And then I started using steroids and it just kind of never left. <laughs> and just got worse and worse and worse as I got bigger and bigger. But as you're a big lump, you don't really think about it. Mm. But if you go into places like IB for an... My bear and stuff like that, and you're taking your shirt off, and you're surrounded by other people that do steroids that haven't got it, people notice it. Talk us through your steroid use. When was the first time you started taking it? 18. 18? Yes, yeah, so I've been on and off it for 10 years. I started going to the gym, seeing nothing, seeing nothing, and I was like, do you know what, I'm just gonna jump on a course. Took some tablets and started getting bigger and kind of never looked back. Is it more for fitness or is it more like an aesthetic? I am so unfit. <laughs> Honestly, at my biggest, I was about 17 and a half stone. I couldn't walk upstairs. Like, generally, my breathing was terrible. I was just, just carrying so much excess weight that I didn't need. It's never about, like, the fitness. It's about the recovery so I can get bigger and bigger. And when all your mates are sitting at, like, 70 kilos, you look like the biggest in the group. Yeah. And it's nice. It's a nice feeling. Are you still on steroids right now? Yeah. This hasn't stopped you? Nah. Oh. I think the problem is I'm so far into it now. And I wish I'd never started, but now I'm on it, it's too late. Dr. John's ready for you now. Fam, good luck, my guy. Later. Got this, man. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, how do you feel? Nervous, currently. Is it ticklish right now? No, it's all right at the moment. This is the stuff that's hanging out, and here's the actual glands for me. After applying a local anaesthetic, the surgeons have filled Grant's breasts up with a liquid to help with the procedure. What are the dangers and risks of this operation? I would think that the most common risk is getting a hematoma. So the body wants to heal it and wants to push blood into your chest. Other risks, nipple inversion, nipple necrosis, but there's different ways to prevent that. All right, let's press out the phaser now. Okay. Melt all okay. the fat, break apart the gland as much as possible. Next, they're going to extract the fat like they would with liposuction. So what this does is breaking apart the fat and the pseudo gland inside is partially fat and partially fibrous tissue. So we break apart the fiber, the fatty parts. Fry that much fat for the Oh, to be fair, I did offer somebody fry if I drink some. Can we get up into a Yeah. <laughs> So fucking painful. Fuck. It's a girl! Yay! <laughs> oh, wow. That is fucking horrible. <laughs> I never knew this is what a gland looks like. Yeah! Yes! Yeah, so yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely can't believe those massive glands came out of Grant's body. Honestly, if that doesn't put you off taking steroids, I genuinely don't know what will. 
Since steroids are illegal to sell in the UK, where do they come from? I'm in an undisclosed location and I'm about to meet an international steroid dealer who makes steroids in his kitchen. Yo. I what's going on right now? So basically I put so basically I have a solution of Nandrolon or Deca. Uh, we've got the raw powder here, put a couple of chemicals in there, and I'm just finishing it off with some seed oil. This is the carrier, this is the solution. Like how do you get the right ingredients for it? Well, I mean, if you're buying it, um, you know, over the internet, or even from, from your local dealer, you don't know what the fuck you're getting. Especially when you're injecting it straight into your muscle. Has it got hairs in it? Has it got bits of fucking shit floating in it? That's going to give you, you know, sepsis. What's the wildest things that you've heard being put inside steroids then? Well, I've seen some very dirty conditions. Dirty, you know, smoking cigarettes over it, and the ash is dropping in, it's not getting filtered. I've seen uh, people have injections and then go bad. They have to have the whole leg cut open and drained. Uh. It's fucking risky. It's risky. There's not a lot of people actually making this shit. So the guy in the gym who's telling you, yeah, yeah, this is the best gear. How the fuck do they know? Do you know what I mean? Every time you take this shit, you're risking your fucking life. You know, it's, it's a lottery. Unless you're making this yourself or getting it from a pharmaceutical company, you don't know what the fuck's in it. You're the most honest drug dealer I've ever heard in my life. Not everybody who makes and sells drugs is trying to kill people and, and rinse them. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, it's a, it's a grey area. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, ethical drug dealer. Yeah. What would you say is like your demographic? It breaks my heart to say it, but 16 to 24 years old. 16? Just as they're like sort of coming through puberty and this, you know, young guys wanting to just be both or whatever. If you train properly, die properly, take this shit, you're going to feel indestructible. Who doesn't want to feel like that? All of these ingredients, are they like easily sourced? Yeah, easily. The chemicals are just household everyday items. Sourcing the rows, you have to order them from abroad, get them shipped in. And that's the riskiest part if customs sees it. But that's all they'll do. But the risk reward, if you compare it to other drugs, I mean, it's insane the returns you can get. It wouldn't be uncommon for us to, on a bad month to make 50 grand and a good month to make 100 grand. On a bad month, 50 grand? So easy. There's filter paper on here, it's just a very fine membrane. If this is not filtered, you are for sure going to have big problems, okay? You're going to have gaping holes in your ass or in your shoulder or whatever with poison coming out. So this step is very important. So we've got here, finished product. I just do it by eye there, so now you've got your bottle. There it goes on, and there you go, okay? This is nuts. And if you put a light through, you should say it's clean. There should be no particles in there. That's a, that's a good tip, actually. If you do buy gear, get a light on it. If there's shit floating in the gear, don't take it. Don't take it. Cap comes off. There you go. Made in what? 30 minutes. No time at all. That's crazy. Powerful shit. It's not to be abused, man. Right. So what would you say to any young person who's thinking about taking steroids? Don't fucking take it. It'll ruin your life. No fucking teenage boy anywhere in this fucking world needs to be taking anabolic steroids unless they've got a real medical issue that, you know, that, that needs it, that needs it, you know, like, but, I mean, kids taking fucking trend, come on, man. You're gonna fuck yourself up. You're gonna fuck yourself up. And you're not gonna come back for it. You look like shit. You can't fucking shag your bird. You can't, you know what I mean? You've got no interest in life. You know what I mean? It's like, do you really want it? Now John is making 50 to 100,000 pounds a month from making steroids in his kitchen. Who's to say other dealers aren't doing the same thing, but worse? You don't know what they're putting in there just to try and increase profit margins. So a lot of steroids that are available in the market might be unsafe and it could lead to definitely infections, septicemia, and you might even have limbs removed. It worries me that even the dealer is warning people not to take steroids. But for some athletes competing in the bodybuilding industry, they would argue that taking steroids is a necessity. Okay, every single athlete today, it will be their first time ever on a bodybuilding stage, so we do need to give them lots and lots of support. We have our first athletes ready, I believe.
With the bodybuilding community, do you think any of them would have been using steroids in their preparation? At this particular show, I imagine most people were. Oh, okay, so is it like an open secret with bodybuilding? Yeah, so there's two different types of federations. So FITEX is a federation that doesn't drug test the athletes. There are certain ones who do, so obviously no one there will be. But at FITEX, it's, I imagine, most of, if not everyone. Oh, okay. So as you said, no drug testing, yeah. probably no stigma towards that. No, no, definitely not. Have you ever tried steroids? Yeah, I think it was 22 when I started okay. taking it properly. What's your stance on some of your athletes maybe taking steroids? Do you advise it or not? It is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, and I feel like it's, a, it's something that someone needs to come to the conclusion themselves. I'm gonna then try best advise you to do it in a safe manner. A lot of men definitely have body dysmorphia and they take the steroids to make themselves feel better, but it ends up having a negative effect. Have you or anybody else, do you know, like, are they taking steroids for preparation for this? I do take steroids. Oh, you do take steroids? I do take steroids, yeah. yeah. But it's all controlled, it's not abused. Mm. I have my bloods taken uh, before and after a course um, to minimalise any risks yeah. that they may pose. Would I promote it and advise someone to do it? No, I wouldn't. Mm. Um, but for me, I'm competing against others that do it. Yeah. You have to stand a chance. Even the playing field for you, Exactly. Like if competitions don't test for steroid use, hence allowing it, those competing often think that they won't stand a chance without it. Since every single user I've spoken to says that they wouldn't advise anyone to take roids, surely they should be banned from competitions altogether. David Crossland, a former steroid using bodybuilder, has turned his efforts to harm reduction. So Dave, what do you do nowadays? Probably the easiest way to describe Eval is a blood testing company for people with alternative lifestyles. It's just about minimizing the harms that people expose them to, be that steroids, or be that recreational drugs. Let's get into your story in particular. <laughs> You're a pretty big lad, I'm telling you, like the biggest guy I've seen so far. How did you first get into using steroids? I started steroids at 19. I finished steroids at 24, at which point I was very large, not in bad condition, and had the potential to turn pro as a bodybuilder. And then I, t I tore my left pet completely off. Uh, that sort of ended that, and then I spiralled into depression. The renal specialist basically says I outgrew my kidney's capability of managing my physique. So I'm stage four kidney failure. And that'll never get better. Is it a lot of medication now? Is it like no, a whole lifestyle no, no, change? No, 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 not really. Uh, not from the kidneys. We've got a lot of medication for the heart failure and the heart attacks, but not from the kidneys. Heart attacks? <laughs> heart, plural, heart attacks. Well, I had a heart attack, an official heart attack, an official myocardial infarction in end of November last year. Do you know anybody who's died because of steroid usage? It's difficult to say that someone's died because of steroids. Are there people that have passed that steroids may have played a significant role in it? Yes, without that. You can't OD on steroids. You know what I mean? You can't go and take too many and drop dead. Yeah. It's a time thing. It's a constant abuse situation. So what advice would you give to an 18 year old possibly considering taking steroids? I have people come to me on a weekly basis that I'm telling them they're now testosterone dependent or they're now infertile. And, and they're shocked by that revelation. You know, there is risk with these drugs. Learn the risks you're taking and then decide if those risks are worth those rewards. Steroid use is rife in the UK and it's extremely easy to get your hands on them, trapping men in a cycle that seems hard to break. From what I've learned, a lot of men turn to steroids when they're feeling self-conscious with social media platforms often perpetuating the narrative, feeding us unrealistic body images. Ironically, the side effects can sometimes make men even more self-conscious, and in some cases, be fatal. There needs to be more education available on the impact steroids can have on men's lives. Because if people are aware of the potential risks, I doubt so many would take them. Good work, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired, man. I want to go to sleep. <laughs>